Well, another day, another dollar, or whatever they say. They're trucking along. We've got a repo fifth wheel camper behind us. I'm actually about 30 miles away from dropping it off. It was 170 mile tow, something around there. Uh, funny story is I picked this up from Jack TV. If you guys watch him on YouTube or TikTok, I've done some work with him in the past, and then <clears throat> I had a guy reach out. Of something wrong with his truck needed this camper moved from his repo yard to the auction, and I was like, I can do it in a couple days, whatever. Got the address, didn't think of anything of it. Got the guy's phone number, went to call him and say, hey, I'm an hour out. I'm like, oh, I know exactly who that is and where his house is or where his yard is and uh, where the camper will be. So he called and he wasn't around, so he just left a release form out for me to sign, and there we go. We'll take it up to the auction here. This thing is, is pretty rough. It's uh, got a lot of personal stuff in it still. It's I had to get in it to move the slide in of course the battery was dead and the jacks didn't work nor did the slide so i had to put my jump box on it got it hooked up to the truck and then plugged it in let it start charging through the truck and then put my jump box on it it was able to get the slide in but i had to kind of get in it and it's it's rough very rough shape very i don't know sad situation i guess but anyways We'll be there in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, get this dropped off and done for the day. But tomorrow we have to pick up two. Watch out, vehicle on shoulder ahead. Two repo cars that go to an auction down in South Carolina. And if you guys know anything about the weather, they don't have any power there, which won't affect me. But I got to be smart tomorrow about where I'm getting fuel, make sure I got full tanks as I make my way through Virginia down into North Carolina and make sure I'm full because the guy I dropped these off for, he said they don't have any power and they don't know when they'll get power back, so all the fuel stations are down. But moving right along, this thing's not all that heavy, maybe eight, ten thousand pounds. It's an older camper. The axle. It's got good tires on and the brakes work really well. I was really surprised. I was kind of worried when I saw the year. And knowing it got repossessed of what shape it was in, but well, all's been good. I'm assuming they topped the tires off when they picked it up, when they repoed it, because uh, they didn't need any air or anything when I picked it up. Well, I know it's raining. Here's this camper. Just closed up a little bit. Oh. There she is. I actually got a little cleaned off on the way up here from the rain. These tires might be leaking a little bit, but it had a spare tire with it, so. This is the side that must have been up against the tree. But home we go. Well, I guess I'm back to making videos or whatever. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing actually headed pick up a couple repos in Virginia while well, I was under the impression they were at this they were in Roanoke well one is the other one's about an hour and 15 minutes away in Concord Virginia so that kind of you can hear the rain it's obviously done nothing but rain for two weeks now so it puts me in a little bit of a time crunch. I'm hoping I can get to the, I'm gonna have to do a little backtracking, but I hope I can get to the first place, get loaded. They're owned by the same company, so then the release between nine and one. The guy's been a pain in the butt. Just rude, nasty, like, I'm just like, hey, I'm just trying to pick up cars. So get there and then go over to their other location about an hour and 15 hour, hour and ten minutes away get that one picked up before one o'clock I pick up that second one that puts me close to my third pickup which is a truck bed from a auto recycler or something 
the bed goes back to Pennsylvania, but if I get it picked up today, I don't I don't really have a time crunch that I'm trying to fit tomorrow. I can get back a little quicker. So needless to say it's stressing me out a little bit because the guy has been so difficult. I don't want to drive four and a half hours down here to get these make it to the first place and then him be like oh well you know you're not going to be over there before one it's like well I'm, I guess it depends on how long it takes me at the first place so if it takes them forever that's not really my fault that like I've got about 45 minutes to spare so if they take an hour to get me the first car then I'm going to be past one o'clock if they won't release it to me, then I'm like, then I'm not even picking up the first one. I'll just pick up that truck bed and I'll go home. I don't. Dealing with repo yards is so difficult sometimes. They have the weirdest hours. Like, he's only Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 9 to 1. So, it took me a little longer than I wanted to to get moving this morning. I had to go get my trailer and I was in like ankle deep mud trying to get it where I park it which is fine and I'm kind of worried about getting stuck coming out of there going going down in there it's downhill it's all gravel and then when you hit the flat it's it's real muddy because they've been coming in and out of there with trucks um, so I just wanted when I got hooked up I needed to make sure when I made this turn I didn't I had to dodge an excavator and dodge a truck. So I'm like, I got to make this in one shot, one shot only coming out of there. There's going to be no stopping to back up and make sure I don't hit the truck or the excavator. I was like, I got to get this right. And it was pitch dark and pouring. So I was like, it took me a little while, but I made it out in one shot. Because when you get out of there, keep going on the flat and then you finally hit that uphill but it's gravel so I knew if I made that gravel I was good so I got the trailer pulled out to the gravel and then got everything else hooked up um, where I wasn't in such deep mud and water so it's just nice to have a place to park the trailer but not at the house because it's sometimes I mean I had recently I had four trailers at the house and uh, knowing how much it was raining I didn't want to tear the grass at the house so we'll go down here and get these picked up and then I will uh, I gotta go down to Greer South Carolina so down 85 you know it's not so hot in some places down there which is terrible and sad um, I don't really have a time constraint of when I can deliver down there so just the next three hours are like every minute counts for me so we'll get it done and uh, just uh, keep doing what we do I guess well let's just talk about how the day's been gone because I have been go 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 and now I'm finally where I'm not fighting any time constraints or anything for today or really tomorrow um, other than I have to figure out how to get a truck picked up um, either tomorrow or Thursday before I head north to pick up my first snowbirds of the season but um, that truck's a buddy of mine's a truck dealer and he sold it and it's going to Massachusetts and I was like, ah, let me check to see how far it is from where I got to go in New Hampshire. It's only an hour. So it, uh, it's going to work out really good because I was just going to go off empty. Don't, don't know who that is. Um, so we get to the first place. Uh, 2022 Ford Edge. Runs and drives on the trailer. Then we beat feet an hour and 15 minutes to their other location where they have a 2018 Ford Edge. 
run and drive with keys. Well, when I get there, the guy's like, you know this thing doesn't have any keys, right? And I'm like, my whole thing is I don't really pick these up unless they have keys and they run and drive. Like, I'm not in, uh, my thing is I can get it on the trailer, but then getting it off is a pain in the butt. So I um I get there and I'm like, are you sure? He's like, I was told, because I, I told him that I don't really pick these up without keys. And he goes, I'm gonna call the office again and double check, but he's like, I was the one that picked this thing up when they repoed it, because he had a he had like a F350, newer F aluminum F350 with a um, wheel lift on it, and like they have the cameras or whatever that's getting the license plate. It was all full setup repo truck. He's like, I picked this up and it I, it didn't have keys. He's like, I, they may have dropped them off, but he's like, the e brakes locked on it. He had to pull it out of there, drag it down the road, and then put dollies on it. He had it. Well, I was at the first location. He said, don't pull it into the yard there. He says, it's Virginia red clay, and it is about eight inches deep right now because of all the rain. I was like, no problem. So I pulled up. It's on this on this curve, like this downhill curve. So can't really sit in the road out front. So I pulled over real quick, back far enough where somebody could see me. That they came around that, because it's like coming from a stoplight so should, or stop sign, so it should only be going like 10 miles an hour. So I parked up the road and walked down there and said, hey, where do you want me? Because there's a couple businesses there, but you don't want to pull into another business and get them yelled at or anything like that, or you know, have to deal with somebody being unhappy. He said, "Go down, turn around at the second entrance to that plant down there. You can pull up and back in, or pull in and back out." He said, "When you get back up here, just park on the downhill because it's like on the on the straightaway." He says, "I'm gonna call the office and see about these keys." So I get up there and he says, yeah, they said no keys. And I was like, I'm not. He's like, I don't think it'll even get up on the trailer. Even if you had, uh, even if you tried to winch it, like it's, he says, I can get it out here, but then we're on the hill in the road. He says, I can call the business next door and see if we can use their lot, but I don't know how it's gonna get up on the trailer. Like this thing is lock lock. You've ever had those cars with electric e-brakes when they clamp down they clamp down good like it'll squat the car he's like it, it he says it was tough he's like i had to put it in four-wheel drive and get it out of where i was on asphalt he's like, dang so call the guy that i do this for he's like he's like i'm on the phone with the bank right now they said there's supposed to be keys with it but if there's not i mean there's not so he said, I'll compensate you for it and your time to go over there and everything. So it's like, just bringing one down isn't really worth it money-wise. Bringing two down makes complete sense. So I hope I'm taken care of as if I were to bring the vehicle down because that's not my fault. So then I left there and I had to go over and pick up this truck bed, which I don't, they have it on this rotten wooden skid that's falling apart it's falling off the skid so i've had to loosen the straps pick it up and adjust it and the way they had it sitting i'm like doing everything i can to not damage it because we usually haul flipped over on the bed rails they have it sitting like like it would be on a truck but with the skid under it and that's how it was slid off the skid when i got there so I'm like trying to make it to it where it doesn't get damaged. I mean, the bed already has damage. It's going to a body shop. It's a good used bed, so they're going to have to do work to it. But it's one of those, like, you don't want to make it worse. Uh, so I got that on there. Of course, it was pouring rain. It's pretty nice out now. It's Clouds are breaking up and uh, finally not raining for once. So I'm like three hours away. I got to get fuel at least one more time because the place I stopped in Virginia was overpriced but I didn't really have an option on the road I was on or the area I was in there's no no place with like truck lanes or anything to get diesel and it was like 369 and I'm like looking around I'm like 
I can get it for like three three oh nine. I'm like, I'm not gonna fill up at sixty cents a gallon more expensive. It's like I'd rather hit a place down here. It's like two ninety seven or something with mud flap, and just fill up truck and transfer tank, and then that gets me all the way home to deliver and then back to my house. So, um, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I would hope I'm taken care of because I, if it was the other way around and I sent somebody, I would just pay them what it, the whole job was going to pay and then figure out through whoever, the bank or whoever pays the bill to him, compensation because they thought it had keys, it doesn't have keys. It's going like 300 some miles, so... Like, they're gonna probably have to either get keys for it, get it running, which I don't see why they wouldn't just pay, you know, that locksmith company to come do, you know, 1-800-KEYS or whatever it is, and get them just to make one to be able to start it and move it, instead of like, or else they got to like send a rollback all that way, which I know is expensive. Well, we'll see. I'm not stressing about it, I just, it's kind of one of those things that's like, dang, if I did all this for half of what I thought I was going to get paid on the way down, I'm going to be really upset, but really out of my control at this point, because I already had the one on the trailer. Like, if that first one, if I would have went there first and that happened, I would have been like, am I just bringing one? Like, am I getting paid for all of it? But I already had one, and I was like, I'm already committed to that point. I can't. All right, well, headed home, and uh, it's, the sun's just coming up. It's about 7 o'clock. Had quite an eventful evening last night. I, uh, so, where was I? I know where I was. Where was I? Just south of Statesville. Huntersville, Mooresville, something like that. It's a sh shitty little pilot there. Anyways, I noticed that I've been having issues with the with the wiring on this trailer. At first, I found the ground broke and I fixed that. That was a couple weeks ago. I really haven't run the trailer that much, uh, but it's all been good, whatnot. Well, I go to turn my lights on and the lights don't come on while I blew the fuse for the run trailer running lights. So I really didn't feel like messing with it all that much. I was like, I'll put a fuse in it, see if it stays on, how long it stays on for, and kind of assess it from there. If I can maybe get home, I can, you know, do a little more and a little easier not laying in a pee-filled parking lot underneath this trailer. I know it's a trailer because the camper I hauled all the way from Vegas never had an issue camper I hauled the other day never had an issue so I, I know it's this trailer so I pull into that pilot and um, the lights go completely out on the trailer so I pull into that pilot there's no parking there's people quadruple parked everywhere that you can I had to like pull in make a turn and back back out because somebody had the like exit block you couldn't make it make the turn with the trailer so across the street there's a sheets and i was like okay i'm just gonna pull over there they got pretty good lighting in their parking lot i'm gonna pull over there and uh kind of look at this real quick maybe get something to eat it was getting late well i pull in and i can't really get into the parking lot and sure enough there's a cop behind me. So he turns on his lights just kind of for visibility, even though we're like in a shopping center. He hops out and I, I hop out and I walk back and I'm like, I know my lights are out. I pulled in here to try to see what was going on with them. I said, uh, I just noticed it. So I jumped off the highway real quick, to see if I couldn't fix it. 
like, all right, well, don't leave here without all your lights working because we have a lot of accidents around here. Like, well, I didn't really plan on leaving without my lights working, but okay. So, I'm messing with it. I get a little frustrated. I'm like, I'm hungry. I'm going to go in and get something to eat. I'm going to come back out a little level-headed. I come back out. He's sitting there waiting for me to leave. So, I get the running lights back on. I go to check four ways and turn signals. Well, I don't know if it's coincidence or something. Because it's the trailer back feeding into the truck, I lost all turn signal and four ways on the truck itself. Indicator doesn't come up or anything, so. I'm guessing the relay that they have under the dash for these is bad. It seems to be a common issue, so I ordered a relay and uh, kind of just have a jumper wire in it to get me home. But he sat there and waited for me. And as I like went to roll by, kind of like hit his lights. I stopped, rolled my window down. I was like, you get it fixed? I'm like, yeah, good enough to uh, have all working lights and get home. He's like, all right, well, I just want to make sure. I'll sit here waiting to see what you did. So after that encounter, I finally uh, made my way to where I was going to park. There's no truck parking there. I was either going to park in Mannheim Statesville or the rest area when you get right at the Virginia line coming up 77. Go to pull into the rest area, it's kind of rough, beat around, lights go out again. So, put a new fuse in it to get me home. They're still working, they've been working. The rest of last night, because I left my running lights on where I parked because we we're kind of on the uh, on ramp to the rest area. I wanted to be able to be seen, even though I had trucks in front and behind me, so kind of protected and didn't have to worry about it, but just for safety. And uh, instead of delivering this, I guess I'm just going to run straight home and uh, figure out either later today delivering this truck better, just get up early tomorrow morning to do it so I can figure out what's going on with the trailer because. Usually I would just, if I had to, I would move this skid over to my small trailer and just take it up like that. But I've got to leave on Thursday. Today's Wednesday. I've got to leave tomorrow night with this trailer to go all the way up to New Hampshire. So it's like I got to get it home and get it fixed no matter what.